He is charged with three crimes, organized crime group, human trafficking, and rape. If you go to Andrew Tate's page, almost everything that he has posted, everything after December 29th was wiped clean. My understanding is DICOT is a very, um, it's a very serious in institution to be investigating you. It would be like being investigated by the FBI. So let's talk about the Loverboy method first. The Loverboy method is a, so you cannot, you cannot own almost any guns. I am going to guess that this is for sure broken. There has been lots of speculation about his involvement with the mafia. He needed a hundred grand to stay alive. So I don't need to be mafia if all my friends are mafia. Hello everyone. I'm going to give you uh, all the information I've been able to gather on the Andrew Tate arrest situation in the last 24 hours. Yesterday, I covered it a little bit in detail on my live stream. However, I spent more time digging into a bunch of stuff. I promise you I've got unique goodies in this video that I don't think I've heard anyone else talking about. I'm going to talk about Romanian gun laws. I'm going to talk about the lover boy method. I'm going to talk about like Romanian police tactics. So um, stay tuned if you want to get an extra interesting information. Here's what I promise not to do. I am going to engage in good thinking, which means I am not going to presume the conclusion before I have the evidence to get there. What that means is I am going to say that he is accused of three crimes because he is accused of three crimes. I am not going to say that he is guilty of these three crimes. I am not going to say that he is innocent. We don't have the evidence at this point to say either of these things. If you were saying either of these things, you're participated in motivated thinking, which, you know, is human to do. I'm not going to do that though in this broadcast. So here are the three crimes that he is charged with. Andrew Tate was arrested yesterday, December 29th. He is charged with three crimes organized crime group, human trafficking, and rape. But how the fuck did this happen? And why is Greta Thunberg related to the situation? Is she a human trafficker? No, she is not. All right, so let's get into the details. So let's start with the, the tweet, the famed tweet. So it starts with him saying, hello, Thera Grunberg. I have 33 cars, my Bugatti, my two Ferrari. This is just the start. Please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collection and their respective enormous emissions, which is a little bit funny because if you look at global emissions, vehicles are not dominantly the main thing responsible for global emissions. It's much more industry related. So it doesn't really matter that you have 33 cars. You're not really the one driving global climate change. It's, it's industry, but that's aside. She says, yes, to enlighten me, alien me back at Smell Dick Energy. He responds with another video. Now, this video has been taken down. In fact, if you go to Andrew Tate's page, almost everything that he has posted, except for he's made a couple of posts in the last few hours, everything after December 29th was wiped clean from his, um, from his Twitter. Why? So, he released this video. Where he's sitting in a Komodo, smoking. That is an extremely funny screen grab as well. I just have to say it. This video was released and him responding to her. In the video, you see that there is a police box. It is believed that the police box was utilized by the Romanian police to find Andrew Tate and implement the successful arrest of him. Why do people believe this? I want to talk actually in depth about why the pizza box may or may not be relevant. I've heard a lot of people talking about it and I haven't heard any good kind of thought processing on it. So here is basically my understanding. The Romanian police were likely aware that Tate was back in the country. He flies with a private jet. However, my understanding is that with any sort of private chartered flight, when they're landing, you still have to do customs. You still have to declare the people that are arriving in the in the country. This makes sense, right? So it's quite likely that the Romanian police knew that he was back in Romania. He probably flew in from London or probably Dubai. He's been traveling kind of all over the place. I think he was in London because his latest podcast that he was on was just Pearly Things and she's based in the greater, uh, greater London area. Probably what was happened is that they were planning to raid him for some time. However, when you're doing a major, major raid where there is a primary suspect that is very affluent and um, very hard to get a hold of, you're going to want to make sure that when you're raiding his location that you arrest the suspect in question, particularly because I believe for Romania, because they're a smaller, poorer country, extraditing their, uh, their suspects is a lot more difficult. So for somebody as rich as Andrew Tate, making sure that you know exactly where he is at what hour, getting into his building and arresting him in person is going to be extremely important and you don't want to fuck it up as the police, right? In this case, the police, again, they went into five of his uh, warehouse locations. I'll go into detail about the press release a little bit more in a little bit. 
I believe probably what was actually done is they knew he was in Romania and when he released the police box, it it guaranteed to them which of his warehouse locations he was physically at so that they could send their arresting police to go in and extradite him immediately so that he didn't have a time to flee or avoid charges. That's probably why the pizza box itself was useful, if it was used at all. Which, by the way, I haven't seen any primary sources saying that the pizza box itself was used, but it's reasonable to conclude because hours after he made this post, he took it down, and then several hours after he made the post, he was being arrested by the Romanian police. So that's why Greta Thunberg is related to any of this situation. Let's move on to the actual press release. So this is a press release from DICOT. DICOT is the Federal Bureau of Romania. They are uh, tasked with, they're basically the major task force that investigates organized crime and terrorism in the country. Take this with a grain of salt because I'm only gathering this from reading comments, Reddit comments, Reddit posts from Romanian people about DICOT, not just recently, but I've looked back in time to about 2016 to see like what Romanian people say broadly about DICOT to understand basically the level of like um, immensity that this actual com institution is. My understanding is DICOT is a very, um, it's a very serious in institution to be investigating you. It would be like being investigated by the FBI. If they're looking into you, it's a big deal. If you're being raided and arrested by DICOT, it's a big deal. Um, a lot of Romanians presently and recently have been claiming uh, that they do not believe that DICOT is overly influenced by big tech. They believe that they don't give a fuck about social media or anything um, and that they're kind of like the big cojona police in Romania. So take that with a grain of salt. These are just opinions from Romanians that I've been able to gather from like 2016 to now. So to the press release, what we see is that uh, it was noted at the beginning there was uh, implemented a five home search in case of investigation under in investigating the crimes of organized criminal group, human trafficking, and rape. It was noted at the beginning of 2021, four sus suspects, two British, two Romanian. It's believed that the two British are Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan. I'm not sure who the two Romanian citizens are. Constituted a criminal group organized in order to commit crimes on the territory of Romania, but also other countries such as United States of America and Great Britain of the crime of human trafficking. Okay, Victims were recruited by the British citizens to miss by misrepresenting their intention to enter into a marriage cohabitation relationship and the existence of genuine feelings of love. The lover boy method. I'm going to talk in depth about this method. It's extremely important that if you're weighing in your opinion on this topic, that you understand what the lover boy method is, because that's what they're being accused of using, which is fundamental to the charging of human trafficking. Okay. Also, if you're motivated to dismiss all of the women, probably the main way you're going to do it is by saying they're just disgruntled ex-girlfriends. The issue is that this, this out is complicated by what the lover boy method actually is. They were later transported uh, and housed in buildings in Ilfov County, where by exercising acts of physical violence and mental coercion, they were sexually exploited by group members by forcing them to perform demonstrations for por of porn. I won't read all this because it gets a little bit jumbly, but essentially what they're saying here is they believe that these women were coerced into coming over to the lover boy. They were basically bait and switched. They were promised a relationship. They came over and instead they were given basically forced labor opportunities and that's about it, right? Not the best situation. So they were forced to do porn. Now it is no shock to anyone to hear that Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate have a webcam business. They talk openly about this, but they have always claimed that they pay the women who come over 50% and they just run the back end for the women. So the women get to basically just perform their sexual acts and they still keep 50% and they don't have to worry about any of the back end, setting up the webcams, setting up the, the streaming systems, setting up the software, buying the computers, buying the microphones. Um, Andrew Tate and his brother said that they handled that and the woman did the pornography for them. Now these people are saying that they were forced to do it. So far, six injured persons have been identified who were sexually exploited by the organized criminal group. With regard to the crime of rape, it was noted in March 2022 an injured person was forced on two occasions by a suspect through the exercise of physical violence and psychological pressure to have sexual relations. At the headquarters of DICOT, four people who are reasonably suspected of being involved in criminal, criminal activity were taken in for questioning. Okay, They also say here that part of the mental coercion was using intimidation, constant surveillance, and control and invoking alleged de debts. So, Let's quickly watch the video of the uh, raids. Remember, it is five locations that they're going to be going to. Um, as a heads up, 
this is raid there's nothing that violates tos but it's raid footage so be aware that there will be raiding footage in here like weapons and stuff like that there's no sound in the beginning just as a heads up While you're watching this, take note of some of the items that they'll see in some of the warehouses. So it's really important to note there that you saw multiple guns and weapons in the household as well, because that's going to become important in the future. So even if, say, he gets off on all of the charges, Romania has some pretty serious gun laws that it is possible, depending on the type of citizenry, I'm not sure exactly where he falls in the different gun laws, which I'll cover what the gun laws are. However, it is possible that he may rack up other charges as well. So even if you think that he's guilt innocent of every single thing, there are other charges that might be coming down the line. This is not going to just be like a nothing burger, okay? Anyone who's trying to act like this is a nothing burger for Andrew Tate, it's probably not going to be a nothing burger. So let's talk about the Leverboy method first. The Leverboy method is a pretty commonly established method that is utilized to get girls into sex trafficking. What it often constitutes is a young attractive boy approaching a girl, establishing a relationship. He'll often start by suing her and love bombing her, buying her lots of items, and then over time acting more and more and more, asking for more and more and more from her, getting her more used to doing him favors and racking up debts that she owes him. So, um, it starts when a trafficker targets a young, low-income woman. He showers her with attention and affection. By low income, it mostly should mean lower income than the traffickers. In the case of Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, almost all women they approach are going to be at a lower income. They're going to be looking at Andrew Tate as a top G, as a rich guy, handsome, loaded, who can offer them a lot of things. Um, he's going to ask her out. For a while, he will spare no expense and treat her like a queen. It's all part of a plot to win her trust. So the lover boy method, for example, when there is a massive um, organized sex trafficking group broken up in uh, the UK that was run for about 60 years by a Pakistani family, uh, what they found out is the main way that they got girls into this was through the lover boy method. So they got their young cousins to go approach girls and women, swoon them, treat them like a queen, buy her lots of stuff to slowly build her trust with him, to think that they're in a relationship and then to start asking her for things. So it's a, it's a weird, it's a bit of a weird mind fuck because it's not clear to the victim that they're being trafficked at the very beginning. If anything, they would call it maybe an abusive or in a toxic relationship, but it's actually a, a trafficking relationship. So once the trafficker and the victim are romantically involved, you invite her on a trip, come out to Romania, come out and work with me. Sometimes you'll ask her to move away with him for a better life. Since the woman is usually in love at this point, she often goes with him happily. When they're out of the country, the tra trafficker strikes, will often confiscate her passport and documents before taking her phone. He then passes this precious woman off to another trafficker. At this point, she's enslaved, okay? There's many ways that lover boy will be done. A really, really common thing will actually be through debts. So what they'll start to do is they'll start buying their women a bunch of items and good and and whatnot and they'll start slowly asking their girlfriend for payback they'll be like hey remember that thing about you like i'm kind of sure i need a little bit of help or i just need a little bit of help can you do this thing can you do sexual things and remember all that tate and tristan have to ask the girls to do is porn right so it's not the biggest ask in the world 
So this is something to be really mindful of in this situation is that the lover boy is a very well established thing. Um, if we listen to how Andrew Tate has talked about the girls, it sounds like it's a consensual thing. He says, hey, I am broke. I need a lot of money. Uh, do you want to work for me for doing webcam, right? That in and of itself isn't the problem. The problem is that if nowadays he's bringing girls over with the promise of relationship and then basically rally, tap, rallying up a whole bunch of debts that they owe him and coercing and pressuring them to do porn, this is a form of human trafficking, right? So just because he might be not prostituting these women out to other men, it doesn't mean that he's not engaging in human trafficking because he's making porn, especially if he's keeping almost all of the income from the porn. Another thing that's really important to remember about Andrew Tate is his involvement with the mafia. There has been lots of speculation about his involvement with the mafia. The other day I got a message on Instagram and it was from a young 17 year old and he said, I'll do anything. I want to be mafia like you. Can we work together? And I sat there and I said to Tristan, why does everyone think we're mafia? We're not mafia. Like we don't run around with machine guns. I mean, obviously we have guns. Our house is full of machetes. Are we mafia? Anyway, I don't think, I don't think I'm mafia. So I said to Tristan, look, we're not mafia. And Tristan goes, yes, we are. And I said, why? He goes, we're two huge fighting brothers with women naked on the internet who own casinos, who drive around Bucharest, Romania in over $2 million worth of fucking supercars. Everyone's afraid of us. And if anyone did piss us off at any point, even if we didn't want to fuck them up ourselves, we can make one phone call and they'd either be in a ditch or lose their any right to stay here. They'd have some visa issue and get kicked out of the country or arrested for no reason and put in a jail cell for months at a time. We are basically as mafia as you can get. So I guess I'm mafia. I didn't mean to be. So I was sitting there going, well, I never intended on being an organized criminal. How do you end up being mafia? And I've concluded that if you are competent in every single sphere, you're going to be viewed as mafia. If you're a big, strong, smart, rich guy who's super well connected, how can you not be mafia? How can you not be when everyone wants to know you? Who doesn't want to know the kickboxing world champion who walks into a club with 20 big booty QBs? Everyone wants to know me. The mafia want to know me. So I don't need to be mafia if all my friends are mafia. This is my point. So I replied to him and said, I gave him a job. I gave him a task. I said, I wanted a hundred emails for a hundred days to tell me why he would be a good member of my mafia. That was the task I gave him. And this is a very important lesson you're gonna learn about people. I got six emails and that was it. He said he'd do anything. He said he'd do anything to be in the mafia. I didn't even ask him to shoot nobody. All he had to do was send me fucking emails and his stupid ass didn't do it. Because everybody wants the success, everybody likes the idea of being something, but no one wants to do the work. We already know this. But the reason I'm telling this story is because he actually taught me something. I never really saw myself as mafia. I saw myself as Andrew Tate, a guy you don't fuck with. But now I've accepted I am mafia because when I'm pushing my drop top Lambo around Bucharest, Romania, and everyone knows me and everyone knows just to leave me the fuck alone, I guess I'm just gonna have to accept I've reached a level of competence and brilliance that I'm basically an organized criminal. Okay. So obviously what he's saying isn't precisely necessarily mafia. He's saying, you know, I've got a lot of threats, but he's not necessarily doing crimes. Isn't crimes the most important part of being a mafia? So is he mafia? Well, he opened his first Romanian casino in his thirties. He now owns 15 casinos with Tristan. I don't need to be mafia if all my friends are mafia is a very concerning thing. And let me remind you of another thing that he said in the past. So I'm going to play this video. I'm going to TLDR it. I'll so show a little bit of bits of him talking about a story, but it's a 12 minute video with a lot of extra shit about like gambling and stuff. Basically he was down bad. He's about uh, 30 grand uh, in debt to some dangerous people that if he didn't get the money back to them, they were going to kill him. Um, he realizes he needs to make money quick. He goes to a casino. He blows a whole bunch of money. Now he needs even more money and he lists all his assets and on the list of assets was his girlfriend. He comes up with the idea of a webcam business and the rest is history. However, the reason I'm showing this is to outline that Tate's relationship with the mafia started out very sordid. And now at this point he admits, I am the mafia. If I don't need to be the mafia, if I'm friends with all the mafia. So I'm just establishing that. We'll hear it from his own words. When did you really start like- virus, I can't be escaped. Yeah, pretty much, right? Content wise. 
All right, so uh, I've had a YouTube and shit, but it was small for a while. My first money I made on the internet was the webcam thing. I've talked about it in a lot of podcasts at length, but I can explain again how it all happened. This is a long time ago. This is maybe six, seven years ago. So it's before OnlyFans. It's before making money on the internet was such a big thing. Like now everyone you meet, every 19-year-old meet, does some drop shipping, does da 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 But back like seven, eight years ago, meeting a guy who made money purely on the internet was quite unusual. Mm-hmm. Everyone had like real jobs and shit. The world's moved on fast. So I owed some money to some dangerous people. We won't tell that story, but I needed money fast. And uh, I had 70 grand. I needed 100 to stay alive. Needed 100 grand to stay alive. And I wasn't fighting for a while. That's the time was the way I was making money. So I thought, you know what? I'm sitting there. I had 70 grand cash in my house. I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? Sometimes, Tate, God just loves you and you just get lucky. You're gonna go to the casino and you're gonna make the 30. TLDR, he was not lucky. He lost another 50 grand. So I lost 10 grand in roulette. Thought, fuck it, got up the odds. Went to blackjack. Stuck the perfect strategy, got wiped out, got fucked. Came home, now I'm 50 G's down. So I said to Tristan, we got a week to pay this money. I'm not gonna leave my bedroom. I'm gonna jump ahead again. I'm not gonna leave my bedroom until I figure out how to make money. And then I research money and I realize money isn't real. It's not real and I don't have it. Ah! And I thought, what are my assets? And I listed a bunch and I have five hot girlfriends and they offered me some money, but I thought, mm, no. And then I thought, strip club. And then I thought, mm, no, that's too much money. And then I thought, webcams, porn. I like, talk to live girls now. And I realized these girls make a bank. These girls make a fucking money. So that was the plan. I was like, all right, cool. The girls are gonna be webcam girls. So I originally thought I'll set them all up remotely and they'll do it all from home and send me the money. But the problem with that, are they really gonna give me the money? You know, am I gonna end up with the money or is this gonna go bad for me? Plus, now they need tech. I'm gonna have to send them money to buy tech. Do I really trust the bitch to send the money? Is she gonna work hard? Is she gonna set it up right? This might all go wrong. So the only answer is I gotta bring them all to me and I gotta be in charge. So I flew all five chicks in. None of them knew about each other, nothing. Thank you. Sat down at a nice restaurant. Me, Tristan, he flew two, I flew five, seven girls. So look, about to get rich, this is my plan. I'm gonna do this. I put a spin on it, of course. Big boss, big G, da da got big opportunity. This money's been invested. I've always wanted you to live with me. Now's your chance. You can leave Paris. You can leave Croatia. You can leave whatever. You come live in London with me. You're going to do this. You're going to be rich. I'm going to be rich. Blah, blah, blah. Put spin on it. You're all going to live here. Of my five girls, obviously they all kicked off. Who's this bitch? Who's this bitch? Who's this bitch? I'm like, look, you're all mine. Get over it. Talk about money now. This is a higher purpose. But you fucked her. Yeah, I, f- I fucked her. Who cares? Talk about money. Talk about millions. Get over it. Some of them got upset. They'll start arguing, whatever, whatever. Three left, two stayed. And that was the beginning of the empire. The two who stayed, bought some laptops, sat them down, said, look, you're going to get this much percent. So to be clear, the two that stayed, there's no evidence of trafficking. Unless they come forward with the conversation going very, very differently than what he's saying and him taking away their passports and a way to leave. However, it sounds like they were all consensual at the beginning. So this isn't proof of him who we're trafficking here. Just to be very, 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 very clear. What this is proof of is that he has been engaged with mafia and organized crime for a while. It is decently established. He's talked openly about it multiple times in all the clips that I have showed you. And the idea that D- Dicot has raided him and that it's just going to be a nothing burger is not true. He's been involved with organized crime for a while. It is possible and even reasonable to presume that if he is involved in any way the human trafficking ring, he might be fucked, right? If you were a Tate stan, you have to look at this objectively and say, oh fuck. He might have been lying to us too, right? This is something you need to seriously consider. So this is a breakdown of the gun laws in Romania. Uh, Super handy little document that I found. Uh, It's super quickly broken down. If I break this image into full sides, this actually breaks it down really, really well. Uh, I'll move my head around as, as needed. Okay, so there's basically six levels of gun ownership. Um, To be clear, I don't know precisely which level Andrew Tate and his brother have, okay? So that's going to be really important. We saw that they had guns and weapons, specifically the guns though, and ammo, all over around the house and open, not stored. There was bullets on the table, right? So that could be a really big issue for a number of levels. Um, It's also going to be important to find out if they had any weaponry on them at the time that they were arrested. So if they were arrested and they were carrying as well, that can be a whole other list of problems that will come up for them. So there are security force individuals, okay? Go back to here. They can have a gun on duty. Makes sense? These are like police officers, FBI, Secret Service, SWAT, the whole thing. Dicot agencies. Makes sense. So their police have guns on them. No surprise. He's not a police member. It doesn't matter. There are super citizens. This is just what this writer is categorizing them as. They're not actually legally labeled as super citizens before somebody loses their shit in the comments. This is just the way that this guy is characterizing the level so we understand more simply. There are seven subcategories who are allowed to conceal, carry short, lethal weapons. These are police personnel not on duty, military personnel, magistrates, 
diplomats, and some elected demnitaries, and some appointed demnitaries under witness protection. If you are not part of these groups, you are not allowed to carry a lethal weapon. Full stop. If you are not in this category, you cannot carry. So if they are arrested and carrying, that was going to be a charge potentially in and of itself. Now the next level, a regular Joe. So this is just about owning guns as well. Anyone who's 18 years of the age and passed the basic test can own and carry conceal a non-lethal weapon. Okay. So non-lethal is not going to include the swords. It's not going to include the like air gun. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a gun gun or what was on the table. There was something with a handle that obviously shot something and it was next to the swords. Um, it's on the DICOT website. So we've got a gun here. We've got the swords, and this is what I'm talking about. This looks like it's maybe just a battle axe. There's a knife here. I think it's actually just a battle axe. Although it's got this, it's actually got a weird head. So I don't precisely know what this is, uh, but it's with the swords. It might be nothing. It might be just a repair tool, but there's at least three swords and a knife there as well. Well, a sword and like two sh daggers slash short swords and a knife. We've also got a gun, right? Another gun brass knuckles. So we go back to what they're allowed. Anyone who is 18 passes basic, basic test can carry and conceal non-lethal weapons. So irritant gas. Sadly, they're not allowed to do so in crowded places, in public transport, and any other place that puts up a sign that guns are not allowed. So basically almost nowhere. Now, obviously they're arrested at their home. So it's going to depend probably in part as well is, are they allowed to carry on their property was it a private property is if it's is it private commercial or is it private like um home i'm guessing it's private commercial so i'm not precisely sure how the rules will fall there obviously if it's their commercial they probably don't have no gun signs up so they can have weapons that are non-lethal for sure there weapon collectors they are allowed to own short weapons pistols and revolvers designed before 1945 not after that year. They can own almost any type of non-auto long gun and they need to transport guns from their place to the range, unloaded, secured, and hidden in transport guns. They are allowed to own 10 cartridges per owned caliber. Now, I don't know about you, I don't know much about guns, but none of the guns that we just saw in this video look like pre-1945 guns. They look like newer models of guns. This, for example, looks like it's got a lot more newer tech on it. Now, I don't know much about guns, so I'm possibly completely wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong because I don't think that they had like like the polymer substrates that they use for modern day guns. For every range, they need to first make a written request to the central police station and then go pick up the signed paper. Only then can they go home, pick up their guns and go out, okay? So you cannot, you cannot own almost any guns. If you do, they need to be very short and owned before 1945, and you cannot hold more than 10 cartridges per owned caliber. I am going to guess that this is for sure broken. And I don't think that they are a super citizen because they're not a police personnel, they're not a diplomat, they're not a demnitary. Weapons collectors are allowed to own but not carry guns. They're allowed to own short weapons. Okay, that's what we just went through. Hunters, to become a hunter, pass a basic test, to do an apprentice with another hunter. At the end of the apprentice period, you pass another exam. And after you become it, you can only own long guns. Well, we didn't see any long guns. They were all pistols, glocks, short guns, small guns. Range instructors. These persons can own as many as they like, short or long, with 1,000 rounds per owned. So they need to be a range instructor, a shooting coach, or a shooting athlete. But there is a catch. It is very hard to become one of these persons. For example, to become an instructor, you have to pass a 720-hour course that spreads out over two years and costs about $2,500. I'm unsure for shooting coaches, but you have to be an instructor plus be part of an official club and pass other exams. The most accessible category is shooting the athlete is the shooting athlete subcategory. You can win it for yourself if you do a minimum number of points in one recognized shooting games, uh, like a biathlon. Unfortunately, IDPA is not recognized. Also, to train to achieve the minimum number of points is expensive, so not everyone can do it. Home defense. These people can home defense, but only where guns 
uh, can have home defense, but only where the guns are stored, is written in your gun permit, and not a secondary location. It's not on the streets where they're transporting guns to and from the range. So I am going to guess that there was some illegal stuff going on with their guns, unless they happened to either have a range instructor on site who owned those guns and has proof of ownership, or if the brothers themselves have these certifications, which they might, but I doubt that they will. So the idea that this is going to be a nothing box isn't real. This is a very serious situation for the Tates. It's a big fucking deal. Now I am going to end it off. That's all the information I've been able to dig up at this point. So what have I established very clearly? I have not established guilt or incrimination. I cannot say that he is a human trafficker, a rapist, or an organized criminal. What I can say is, is that his social media presence begs major questions. He has got a social media video that I posted, that I watched with you guys, where he openly says, I am mafia and I don't need to be mafia if I'm friends with all the mafia. So in many ways, I'm, I'm essentially mafia. We've also got an established timeline where he started his webcam business because he owned money to dangerous individuals who would kill the, him if he didn't get them a hundred grand, right? We know that that started his webcam business. There are now six victims who have come out as saying that they themselves were trafficked and harmed and coerced and unable to get away from the sex work that they were doing, the porn that they were making, and that they were non-willing participants, that they were kept there through, they were brought there through the lover boy method, which is an established and known method of human trafficking, and that they were kept there through invoking of debts. That is a very common way that human traffickers will keep their people with them is saying, you owe me money. I'm part of the mafia. I have friends that are in the mafia and I'll fucking kill you if you don't pay me back, right? These are all plausible things. We also have a charge of rape, which is made by one specific individual saying that she was physically forced to have sex with them on two different occasions in March. They were investigated in April 20, uh, in April this year by DICOP before, however, no arrests were made and now arrests have and charges have been laid. This isn't a nothing burger. So the main thing that you're going to see on the other side is people are going to basically dismiss it as a government big tech psyop. Let's give you some information to understand why, why people are going to be saying this. So number one, he was banned from all social media accounts on the same day. And he revealed that his bank also froze his assets. And this is Lloyd's bank, which was about 3.8 million dollars on the same day. Now he has been reinstated on Twitter. However, he's still mostly banned on all social media platforms. Now, does this mean that the social media platforms have infiltrated DICOT and pressured them um, internationally to come up with phony charges against Andrew Tate? Well, I can't find a lot of evidence for that, but obviously if this is something that's going on, there might not be evidence for it because this would be major, major players. However, what I would say is extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And hopefully with all eyes on Romania, a trial is going to ensue. And if there's sushi shit going on, it's likely to get pointed out because everyone is going to be watching and everyone is curious about this situation. So here's what I would encourage everyone before you assume the conclusion or the outcome of this situation, wait for the evidence to emerge. Now for funsies, let's look out of a bunch of people not doing exactly what I'm asking you all to do. And just so it's clear, because this was released like a minute ago, I just got news. He is being remanded for the next 30 days in custody. They're not letting him out, probably because he's a major flight risk, which is reasonable. The fact that the Romanian government is able to keep Andrew Tate in jail for the next 30 days and they see him as a serious flight risk means that they are at least, if nothing else, taking their charges of them very seriously. Andrew Tate did not kill himself, just in case. Andrew Tate famously said, strike one, they cancel you. Strike two, they put you in jail for no reason. Strike three, they kill you. Let's go to the next one. From Laverne. Andrew Tate comes for Greta Thunberg, the child of the globalist elite, and then is arrested the next day. You've got to wonder. No, you don't. Them using the box to triangulate his location amongst his five warehouses to release a um, 
a government arrest that they have been planning probably for some time makes total sense. The pizza box allowed them to know precisely where he was hour by hour to make the efficient arrest. It makes complete sense. Now we've got Sneeko. When the Tate name is cleared, remember all the influencers that celebrated their arrest. Um, I will be clear, if that they are arrested and they are found guilty on these charges and the evidence is there, which I wouldn't be surprised if there is some evidence. They've been involved in the mafia for a long time. It is quite plausible that there are trafficking going on. It's possible, by the way. Here's one thing that's possible. What if they themselves aren't using the lover boy method? What if they themselves aren't trafficking these women, but there are other men of the mafia that are involved with them that are trafficking women to them, and the Tates are complicit and allow these actions to occur in their warehouse? What if that's happening? happening. They would still be responsible legally for a lot of that. Still a really bad thing. We also know that they have no question broken gun laws based on the guns that we saw in there. Unless, of course, one of them is a range instructor or the guns that you saw on the table were a range instructor, which even still, I don't believe range instructors can just have their guns sitting around on tables. So we know that they've at least broken gun laws. They openly said that they're friends with the mafia and they started their webcam business to escape being killed by the mafia. So the idea that they're involved in organized crime is highly plausible. I'm not saying that they definitively are, and I'm not saying that they're guilty of human trafficking, but I am saying that it's not like these guys are just innocent, sweet baby angels who don't break crime or law. In fact, they openly said that they went to Romania because you can pay off the police. Well, hopefully that won't be the case here. Let's look for some derangement syndrome on the other side. Our favorite friend, Eli. Got a Thunberg accidentally breaking up Andrew Tate's human trafficking ring as not only morally right, but also objectively hilarious. I won't lie. If, if it is the case that the pizza box was utilized to find his location and arrest him, it is kind of funny. It is just kind of funny. That's a little bit crazy that the top G got taken down by a pizza box after having an online beef with a 19 year old uh, autistic uh, environmentalist. But you know, whatever. Uh, the issue is, she's saying that he is doing human trafficking. And if you look at Eli's page, it's basically what she says all the time. The problem is, we don't know. So, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to encourage you to think well about these things. Try to get evidence for your claims. I realize that I will make nobody happy with this, but I hope some of you are at least content to know that I've done my best to give you the available information that I've been able to find at this time. I will potentially do uh, updates and follow-ups to um, let you guys know if there's anything else going on as the case itself unfolds. Peace, love. Big hugs. Big kisses. Think well and have a happy life.